Um, all I want to do today, pretty much, is just to go through um, and explain, because um, I've been looking at solar taxonomy for a little while now. Um, I looked it back in 2009, I'll talk about that, but it's only really come to the forefront again uh, quite recently by going on Twitter um, and, and, and linking in there as well with loads of teachers around the country who are using it as well and, and sharing ideas and stuff. Um, I, I write a lot about it as well, it's pretty cool, um, so I can guide you to some stuff which I've, I've been writing about how I've been successfully using it. And obviously um, Sean and so on um, sort of came out in an LTG the, uh, the other month about how he'd seen something and I said, oh, this is what I'm doing, and it was the same thing. So um, it's kind of joined up some thinking which has gone around and obviously it's gone forward. And then other people have been coming to me saying, um, I've heard you know a little bit about it, can you lead a session on it? So, um, so yes, I will. It looks quite easy. So, um, oh, there's some more. Uh, right. <laughs> um, pretty much, um, I'm going to try and deliver the solo session using solar taxonomy, so you guys can actually see how I'm going to deliver like a lesson as such. Um, obviously, it's going to be about 35, 40 minutes. Um, so what I've done is um, I've got you a little notes page, as you you could use it. Um, you don't obviously have to use these in the lessons as such, but I'm trying to, trying to structure it as best I can. So as I go through and explain what each of the different levels are and why we would use them and how you would use them, then uh, feel free to make notes about them. Um, but the main, most important thing is I've got these, um, which is a, a sort of a success criteria, uh, saying what you know about solar taxonomy. Um, so if you could, please, in sort of like your pairs or your group, um, have a look at the sort of criteria, uh, the rubrics as we call it, um, and see what sort of level you're starting at. Are you at the top already? Are you at the middle, at the bottom? Where are um, And discuss why. Why are you at it? Do you know anything about it? Do you not? Um, so give you about a minute or two just to have a little read through and self so, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, so have a look at the rubrics thing. Um, if I can try that. Um, it's got the, the, the little level symbols down the side and explain what those mean as we go through. But just out of interest, um, I don't know, but where, where are people roughly at? Miriam, do you. New, new, so probably near the, the, the little dot at the bottom, maybe, or one of the little strands. Um, we're, we're on here, to, according to the, the pre structural. Chris, you've done a. Oh, I've sent you notes. Know, Nearish the top, but not at the top yet. No, know. so nearly sort of like <laughs> maybe relational yet, okay. Uh, Phil? Um, I've never used it. Never used no, it. I've never used oh, it. I thought I was playing piano looking at that. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> the way. It's a musical thing. Yeah, so that's so that's that's <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. You need to buy a piano. That's obviously not got enough notes on. Oh, good. Um, these are really, really quite key, and they're one of the main features of solar taxonomy. It's, um, it's a rubric, it's a way that students can assess their progress and so on, and I'll show you how we can use it, and hopefully at the end I can have moved you up the taxonomy so you can see, oh, I see what those done there, and I can use that in my lessons. So, uh, it's going to go through, obviously, a brief introduction. Um, as I said, I've got a little staff pay, uh, notes page, you can make notes as you go along. Um, just a bit of background, why, or how it sort of came about that it's, it's happening on the group for a minute. Um, back in 2009, obviously, when I was doing loads of stuff for Learn to Learn, I had to go away and research and investigate, and I did uh, lots of little bits of reading, um, things that I've read, um, like Hattie, um, which is an amazing book, obviously, tells you all the best methods of teaching, which of research and statistically proven, and that sort of stuff. And I read Jeff Petty's um, Evidence-Based Teaching, and this came up in it, but when I was at that stage, I wasn't really ready to have something so complex in my lesson, because um, in terms of theory classroom settings, I'm, I was still trying to get to grips with it because I'm a practical teacher by, by sort, so it took a little while to do it. So what I did instead is um, I wanted a way that I could actually see progress in my lessons. Um, so I used the accelerated learning cycle, which is this, where I, I find out what the kids know to start with, then I teach them, then I set them a really challenging task, and at the end we reflect and see if they've gone from shallow to deep learning. And I used Bloom's taxonomy um, as a way of trying to structure this. So at the end I was doing lots of creative and evaluating, analysing tasks, that sort of stuff. Um, just to try and get this differentiation, this progress of learning going on. Um, but I kind of realised actually when I'd done my research this year that um, solar taxonomy does all that much more simpler and it's a million times better. Now, some of you may walk away at the end of this session and go, well, actually, I don't think it's ready for me, I don't think it's right for me, it's not going to work. Some of you may think it does work, but it's just an option, it's just another thing to hear about. If it doesn't do anything for you, um, then obviously then you don't have to use it, but you know, it's, it's good to try and keep up with different bits of practice and so on. So it stands for uh, Structure of Observed Learning Outcomes. So it's the whole structure is to try and see what students are doing in your lesson and seeing if they're working up from shallow to deep learning. And it makes it really visual, really apparent that students are working from shallow learning at the start up to deep learning at the end. And, and when I've used it in my lessons for the topics that I've done, and I'll show you some examples in the second part, 
Um, kids have come into my lesson knowing nothing and then ended up being right at the very top and can link other things in and so on. And they've really developed their thinking and understanding because of it. Um, so it's a really, really, really good way of doing it. Um, I won't read through these as you go, um, but there's some of the other things which it does. Um, with Sean, we've looked at it um, in a music context, at just looking at planning, seeing how it could develop your planning and make, make sure that in your lessons, just as a bit of a recap, that you are going from shallow to deep learning. Um, but the best thing, obviously, is if you start sharing it and get students in on the act and start learning the terms and that sort of thing, and you use these um, rubrics in your lessons and, you know, and it's all differentiating outcomes on there and that sort of thing, which is really quite easy to do, um, then obviously it, it makes the progress in the lessons so much more clearer and it allows students to see what they need to do to get to the next level, um, which, which is obviously really powerful because how many times do we hear in some of our staff meetings that students need to know where they're at, obviously what to do to move forward, well I've already listed on here some of the things we need to do as teachers to move forward to the next level, so um, if you do that for your lessons, it, again it's a really powerful tool and students can see that. Um, so I was on AFL and so on, it's great for students to, to post it, note, reflect, write um, uh, a little brief summary about why they're at certain levels and that sort of thing, um, which works really, really well. Um, and like I said, it's the whole thing about moving students through this, this deeper learning and trying to get to the highest end of the end, which I'll explain in a second. Um, with the differentiation bit, that there's something very complicated I did a couple of weeks ago, which I'll talk about, but you can even, like, with these rubrics and so on, when the kids come into a lesson, you can have them all start at different points of your lesson and, and still they can work their way up. So you can have lots of differentiation going on in your groups. Um, and it's quite easy to manage because it's all structured there and scaffolded for them, which is good. Um, all the success criteria, again, really, really help. Um, and like I said, all the self-assessment things work good. Um, the last bit at the bottom, I did this a bit secretly with my Year 11 group uh, in the last couple of months before their uh, Year 11 exams. Uh, to try and help them structure the, their exam question and answers, because in the final section of our exam, there's some eight mark questions they've got to do, um, and they're really quite deep, and they need students to really not, not just talk about that particular topic, but link in other aspects as well. And when we use this, they, they were going from sort of like a two out of eight mark question to full eight out of eight mark answers, uh, because they were using the, the, the methods that I taught them, and, and were bringing in different things, and working up the stages, and including them all in their answers. So it's really, really good to help develop that as well. And I know, and um, the internet and so on, I've chatted with people, loads of departments are using that, English I know are using it quite a lot in other schools as well. So, I thought I'd go through and explain exactly what all the different levels are and when a student might actually be at these levels in your lesson. Now the first one, uh, the little dot at the bottom is what we call the pre-structural, and that is when, if you're doing a topic, so for instance in my PE lesson I was doing something on somatotyping, some of my kids will come in and go, what? I don't know what you're talking about. So they would automatically be at a pre-structural level. They're not sure about this topic, and they don't know anything about this subject. So some of you already, when you came in here, said, oh, I'm already at uh, the bottom level, pre-structural. So that's where you're at. And actually, that's a really powerful thing to have at the start of your sessions, because the kids can then make the most progress, because they've started knowing nothing. At the end of your lesson, actually, do you know what? I've, I've moved up like four levels, and I'm up to here now, and I, I can see how it is and what I've done. So it's a really, really good starting point to, to get going. So... Um, like I said, a lot of the new topics we do, a lot of the students naturally just end up at the, the pre-structural level. Um, it's really good. And obviously the visual dot, like a full stop, not knowing much, it is really helpful as well. In a minute as well, as we go up, there's going to be a list of verbs as well, which, which are really helpful when at those levels you use those sorts of words as well. So it acts as a bit of a cue. And I'll send you this, um, a link to this PowerPoint, as, uh, this Prezi as well, so you can see it uh, in your own time. The second level is what we call the unistructural. So in your lessons, uh, obviously you then start giving bits of information, you start doing the teaching and start sharing the, the topic content. Um, if a student only actually knows one bit of content from your topic, either because they weren't listening or because uh, that's what you've covered, then they're at what we call the unistructural le level. They've only learned one thing. Um, I have one idea about this topic, but this is the time when they're gathering pieces of information. So at the end of your lesson, if you go, right guys, so what do we say about somatotyping? And one kid turns around and says, I know there's something about muscles and mesomorph, but they only know one thing, so they've ended up at a unistructure level. I haven't actually moved them up the taxonomy. I need to obviously work on that a little bit later. But I then know that that one child in my class, next lesson I need to work them a bit harder and obviously do so and so. So it informs my planning as well. So that's when a student knows one particular fact about something. Obviously, if as the lesson goes on, you're given lots of these different facts, They've gathered lots of facts. And the next fact, uh, level is what we call the multi-structural. Uh, the learning outcomes show connections, but no significance overall uh, meaning is brought together. So 
they know, for instance, that somatotypin has got something to do with muscles and body shape, and, and I think something's called a mesomorph and that sort of thing. They know all these individual facts, but they don't know how they all link together. So they're still gathering information. So I know several things about this topic, but they gather multiple pieces of information, but not able to see how they all work together. So I've taught them all the little bits they need, but I haven't brought it uh, together. They don't know what the bigger picture is. Um, and obviously, this is a great stage to get the students at. This is the bit where obviously we're obviously sharing our knowledge and so on. And again, we've got some different uh, verbs on the side there, like define, um, describe, things like that. And I know in our topic, you know, we've got to give lots of definitions, and that's great. But then they need to show what these definitions mean, and we need to take it to the next level, which I'll show you in a second. But it's all about these connections. Yeah? They're not made of connections, they've just got all these little facts. Next stage after that, this is the bit, the, the, the sort of the important bit, the pivotal bit in any lesson, um, and that's where obviously we then say, right, you know this about this, that about that, that about that, but now we bring it all together. What's the bigger picture? Okay, so in my lesson, I've talked about somatotyping, which you know, a lot of people here won't know about, and a lot of my students won't know about on the first minute. And they know it's something to do with muscles and body shape and something called a mesomorph, but now they can all tie it together. Oh. Somatotyping is, it's, it's about the body shape and a really muscular person who's got a big muscular frame, they'd be called a mesomorph. So they've linked all these ideas together and they can see how they all join up and that sort of thing. Um, and again, it's all these different key verbs down the side there as well, which are um, you know, all the analysing words and explaining and, um, and classifying and putting things in sequences and order. You know, see how they all work together, how it all ties together. Uh, and the key things at the bottom I put down there is the relationships, the, the key points and how they all interlink. Uh, which makes the relational level uh, probably the key part of our lesson. Now, I talked about how we did it with one of Sean's lessons as well, um, but the next stage is a little bit different. The next stage is where you really push and stretch the students to sort of like the, the bit beyond sort of what I knew I normally taught. So, okay, it's really no right there. Okay. so the final stage on the lab is what we call the extended abstract, and that is where we are really challenging and developing the knowledge of our students. Okay? Um, this is where we get to look at things in a different way. And Sean's going to talk about in a minute how he did it in his music uh, lesson, which he was doing. Um, but for instance, um, I watched, uh, I don't know if Chris is as well, uh, Learn Inspired doing his talk at Teach Me Cleveland about how he's doing um, the, the taxonomy. But he said that. Um, when he did his example, he was talking about volcanoes and how kids know individual facts about volcanoes, but when you put them together and that sort of stuff, um, about they've got lava and that sort of thing, and they form um, like peaks and that sort of stuff. But right at the very end, it's where you get to think differently, like, well, actually, what was if lava didn't come out, but water came out instead? And that sort of stuff. And that then, you're now talking about erosion and stuff like that. So you're changing and trying to develop their topics a little bit more. Or... Um, something that we've done in our lessons, and we then go and link to other topics as well. So, uh, in my last lesson, I did a physiology thing, we we're talking about the muscle system, but then I said, Well, actually, how does that work with the sleep system? And I'd never done it before with a group, I've just talked skeletal, or the muscular, or the heart, and that sort of thing, but I linked it together. And then my students go, Oh, actually, the muscles then do this, and that does that. So, we're bringing in additional topics as well, and it's, it's developing a wider knowledge of, of, of the, the topic that I'm covering. And that's a really, really, really critical bit, actually. Um, that's where we're pushing our A stars and, and our A students because they're, they're, they can bring in other, other knowledge and so on in their um, exam questions and, and things like that. But like I said, that's just a little summary. It's, it's about rethinking it in a different way or bringing in other topics and seeing how things link to other, other areas as well. So, now, I'm using Blooms, I'm using the Accelerated Learning Cycle, but I just want to go over why this has been just mind-blowing and just a difference in, in the level of my lessons quite quickly. Um, like I said, the, the bit versus Blooms taxonomy, you know, Blooms is great, okay, um, obviously remembering, understanding, all the way up to creation and that sort of thing, but the problem is, in my lessons, I've never had a student, when I've used it, go, sir, I've just finished my analysing task, what can I do for my evaluating? They've never done it. It's not been a like, natural jump. One stage doesn't freely move to the next one very easily. It's quite confusing for some of the students. Whereas, with using this, with the taxonomy level, 
They know nothing, they know one thing, they know a group of things, they know how they link, and they can then link them all together and actually extend it beyond this topic and link something else in as well. So it actually oh, yeah. comes together. Yeah, it's cool. So it actually comes together, and it's a really, really easy structure for the students to learn and build upon the next thing. And they can easily look at one of these and see what it is they need to do to get to the next level. And they don't even have to ask me now, they can say, what do I need to get to more structural? Well, they can look at it, okay, because it's written down there already for them to go. Um, again, it makes it really easy and clear for progress. They can see they're moving up, visually see, and there's nothing better for a student when they're actually, they know that they've moved up three levels in your lesson um, on the taxonomy, okay, to, to, to link it in. Um, peer assessment, the best word I've ever learnt this term, really simple, feed forward, okay. Um, again, Rhea at staff meetings are saying, I know what they've done, but I, I need students to tell me what they need to do to move on the level. Well, it's all structured here again. It says what they need to do in this particular topic to get to the next stage. And because I'm sharing it with students, they can read that and see what it is they need to do to get to the next stage. So if anyone has a conversation with them, uh, you, parents, uh, learning leaders coming in and, and doing quick, quick spot checks and so on, that student can turn around and go, well, I've done this, but what I need to do to get next is do this. And they can actually link it in a lot better. Um, there are three questions which obviously have come out from um, the, the thing as well. What am I learning? What do I need to do to develop deep understanding and things like that? Um, and I know it is a bit funny with multi-structure, extended abstract, and that sort of thing, but once you learn it, it's actually really quite clear for the students. Um, they can actually, it's only five extra words they've got to learn, or five phrases they've got to learn. If you kind of embed it in your lessons and so on, and have the space and so on, it makes it quite easy. Um, I talked about differentiation, really, really simple. A kid could come in at the pre-structural, a couple of kids could come in at multi-structural, but you're catered for every student in that class because there are still next steps for progress, okay? It's not, I read a book the other day, or a, a blog the other day, saying that some, in a lot of lessons, researchers found that, that some kids know some, some kids know a bit, and some kids know a lot, and you as a teacher will try and move them all up together at the same pace, but this does it for you, if you just do it in your planning beforehand, and get one of these sort of typed up, based on the learning intentions you want to do. Uh, progress, success criteria, and I've said self-assessment, really, really easy, because it, the, the rubrics are there, and you can just use them and adapt them as you need. The language, as I talked about, um, it can be quite difficult at the start, as I said, but they become a powerful tool. And these are some schools um, around the country. Um, I can't remember which ones they are now. I should do, but I can't remember. Um, but obviously, people look doing these in different ways. Um, I've seen some teachers using these uh, at the end of a lesson, and when the, ki uh, the class or students have actually done a particular task, they've got last five minutes reflection time. Um, these are on the table. Right, what level you're at, and why you're at that level. And the student can then turn around and go, well, I'm at relational level because, blah, 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 blah. I know some teachers have got one of these up on the wall, and um, it's laminated, and they've got post-it notes, and students put, uh, David Fawcett, uh, I think I'm an extended abstract because I can link the skeletal to the muscular system, and at the end of the lesson, they stick it on the wall, and again, that informs your planning. The students can show you visually how it works, and it's a powerful tool for doing that. Um, and then I can obviously the next lesson pick up and say, look, this group of students are at the bottom, can you come and sit here today? You guys are extended abstract, can you set up their stage, I've got a new task for you, and I can then plan my next lesson out a little better. And um, again, it works better when the, the students are involved. Um, so this is Tate Holes, um, who's a teacher um, up in Barnes, I think it is, I think. Um, he uses this. Um, his is the other way around because he's going from shallow to deep. Okay, um, but other people would have it the other way around and go shallow to deep and so on. But again, it's just a way of going from, like I said, quantitative to qualitative learning and obviously shallow to deep learning and, and getting it on your board and, and sharing it with other students. Um, and there we go, another, stu uh, another school uh, doing exactly this, the same thing um, with the, the different uh, levels on there again to get the students involved in it. And there's some of the students using this at the end of a lesson. So they've done their own work. But now, on this sheet, they're just filling out where they are, what needs to do better, and the progress and the lessons that they've made, and so on. So it, it really, really links in uh, and allows them to see that. Oh, so, based on what I've done there, um, so mid-session plenary before we get Sean in and I show you some of the stuff that I've done, um, have a quick look back at the rubrics, okay, um, and see where are you now, roughly, and have we made any progress in my session and hopefully we have, I hope. I hope.